So let's get to the basics now. The basics are really condensed. So feel free to stop the video and also get your notebook out. Now it's time for your workbook as well. So let's get started, shall we not? I'm excited. <laughs> are you? I hope so. Let's first and foremost clarify because overwhelm is such an overwhelming topic anyways. And there's a lot of buzzwording going around and I want you to become a expert on this. So you can serve this overwhelm wave even better. The more we know, the better we can manage anything in life. And a side effect is also when you are really becoming an expert, you're not so muddled and victim modey anymore. You are not this employee of your life, but you're more of a CEO. You can manage way better the more you know and the more you have a grip on what is actually going on. So what is overwhelm not, first and foremost? Overwhelm is not necessarily stress. Yes, you feel stressed, but stress is when what you are experiencing for a longer period of time, the workload, the mental load, the traumatic experiences is getting too much, but you can still handle it. You still think, okay, how can I handle it? How can I control it? And overwhelm is the stage after, is when it reached that point of just being too much for a longer period of time, cause and effect, and you start to shut down. Like you're not able to function on that level any longer and you realize that, like it's not going any further. When we look at this super great <laughs> chart by, I can't pronounce his name, so I won't, about the flow state, which is genius, the book is genius, flow states. It's when you are not at all energetically in flow, but you're starting to burn out. Also possibly bored out, hmm, have that often in with clients because they're not in alignment with who they truly are and what they can bring to the table. You're feeling like you're living someone else's life or somebody is driving you. That's oftentimes the case when we're moving into the burnout state, like we're giving up the responsibility for our life to somebody else. And we are kind of in this outdated version of our life where it just doesn't make sense anymore. You don't want that anymore. And overwhelm can come in very different shapes and forms. That's why I'm giving you a lot of options. You take what resonates. And often overwhelm is in our head. We paint scenarios that do not or never ever occur called also overthinking. And we're just in, in this loop of not being active anymore, but looping, looping, looping and shutting down. It's often the fear of change. It's often related to a fear of loss of security and control and the change that comes with all the decisions that we should actually make at this point and our system sort of declines if we understand that where we are now at when nothing makes sense anymore this is actually the edge of a new magical life i said it in the beginning I believe wholeheartedly that we don't experience overwhelm and this kind of overwhelm if there wasn't something else. And in order to make changes, which is inevitably, you have to understand the mechanics of change because we can sort of shut down and then maybe even take pills. I don't want to be, you know, dramatic, but I've had people that come in and said, you know, I've been diagnosed and labeled with depression, but I don't believe in that. I don't believe in the state of depression being something that I have to live with now. I want to change something, but I truly don't know how. And this is when you really take charge of your life. And it's very, very important to become a change expert in order to make use of change, right? So brace yourself now because now you're getting inside knowledge not many people have on this planet. You become a change expert. You don't need to be afraid of change anymore and lead yourself through it. Okay? I would like you to shift your focus first and foremost from this whole control thing because we cannot control anything that is in the outer world. We can only control what is within us, how we feel, how we react, how we set our boundaries, how clear we become, what focus we take and how we take action. We cannot and never ever, and this is a big part of overwhelm, 
jump on how others should behave, how the world should be different, how others should be responsible for the past and the future, especially related to you. And if it's related to your trauma, like parents, for instance, but it won't work. From my own experience, when you shift towards yourself and you get clear about what you want in life, which can be totally different to anybody else in your surrounding, and you become this healed version of yourself, you can create anything. And oftentimes that means that we leave a lot behind, but you know what? It is okay. That is a part of life. That is a part of growing up and showing also others we don't have to be resentful. Resentment is the worst feeling that you can have. It's very, very low vibrational. But if you become this creator of yourself and your future, then you also inspire others, which is a very, very beautiful thing to do. And this focus shift can save you a lot of pain and time. It is honestly the greatest gift you can give yourself. And I'm happy to be of your service in this gift giving procedure. Shall we start? Okay, so I'll give you now a couple of insights what change is and how you can manage it therefore. So number one, change is not a magic trick. Change is not that you switch from one reality to the new. It is a process. It is a process that is oftentimes not manageable. <laughs> you can only lead it, really. That's the word that I prefer. When you are coming from a, like I was, like a company background, oftentimes we speak about change management processes or a change manager. And what we believe then is that there's somebody who has a plan. And I'm just being very honest with you, 15 years of change experience in, in this world. And people are like, why doesn't this work for me? Because it is not working like that. And if we are believing that there, there's actually a plan to it, then we get punched in the face, like Mike Tyson said so nicely. So if you have a plan, you get punched in the face. It is not a step-by-step -step process or a step-by-step -step plan. Yes, it is a process, but it is very, very, very messy. And believing that it should be easy and controllable is giving you overwhelm per se, because you're thinking, okay, why am I the only one not getting it? Why is there actually a plan, but it's not working? Because it doesn't work like that. It is a very, very messy process. You go one step ahead and then you fall back maybe. And then you realize, okay, this is not the way to be learning. You're growing at fast, fast, fast speed. And oftentimes you don't even see the new reality. That is our work to really become clear what we want in order for us to move into this reality. But we have to go through the mud. And there was a client who said it so nicely. Okay, yes, there is the mud, but now I have my rubber boots on. And with this mentality, you are stepping away from this, but it should be like that. It should be easy. Now I should have that. Just move ahead and move through the mud and note that there is mud. There is mud. So you can grow, okay? Number three, through change, you grow into the next level person and version of yourself. It is not via, you know, you press an app and then you are this new version of yourself. This is a cellular Ident identity shift that needs a bit of time and it needs a bit of clarity and it needs a bit of healing to have the next level life. Only It only works inside out. It only works inside out because otherwise, maybe you have experienced that if you change something in the outer world, your inside is not ready or you don't feel different. I've had a client once who lived in Hawaii and she was so unhappy. When she got cleansed and clear, she moved to rainy Washington, DC. And you know what? She was so happy. She was super happy. It wasn't about the outside world. It was about her inner world that needed to change. And then cre she created her outer world that it didn't matter where she was. I hope this makes sense because we're trained otherwise. So number four is you are moving through an identity shift and please honor that. Please honor that. Be so selfishly in love with yourself to get through this. Be your own 
cheerleader because this is a very, very, very big work that you're doing for yourself, everyone around you. As I said, you inspire other people and for the generations to come. All right. So number five, this we can talk about and we do in my masterminds very deeply, but I don't want to keep anything from you. This is a very important piece of the puzzle. You are almost going through a grieving process. This is based on Kubler-Ross and management gurus. This is like how you go through change and how you go from denial, oftentimes anger, oftentimes confusion, even depression, and then crisis, which is the break point and the make point into, okay, I accept where I am. I create next first steps. And with these next first steps and feeling comfortable, having let go of a lot of crap that I no longer, that no longer served me and creating my new life, like almost like a prototype step-by-step, I become more confident. And yes, this is what I want. No, this is what I don't want. Creating boundaries. This is truly what I fight for. And this is truly what I'm not having anymore. And that takes time and it raises your self-esteem over time. Very important to take action, therefore, because oftentimes, also one-on-one clients, they get very stuck in confusion and depression state. And only if we move through it, really get clear, really get cleansed, we can go towards the next steps. So crisis break and make point is not holding on to the past anymore. No more resistance to change. You're letting it happen and you're making it happen. Number seven, know that it is absolutely normal that it feels so uncomfortable, that change feels so uncomfortable. Even though it is the only constant in life, our brain is wired that it doesn't like change. It's a survival brain. It rather wants to keep us safe and unhappy than unsafe and happy. And this is what we need to know and reframe. I reprogram my entire brain and we're not born to be fulfilled and happy. This is a quote by Gerald Hüther, one of wonderful neurologists, neurobiologists from Germany. It is our job to reframe our, our brain or rewire, sorry, there's a, there's a typo, rewire our brain that way. Okay. And how you do that We will focus on that in another workshop because this is about clarity. But reprogramming of your thoughts, your limiting beliefs is a very, very big part. And isn't that crazy how we know nothing about change when it is the only constant in life? I think that is, it is actually hilarious. I hope now that you got a bit of change knowledge, change meat, so that you can lead yourself not say manage lead yourself better through this you just want a ticket with this knowledge alone by changing perspective you can lovingly accept where you are at because i know in this situation we can be so harsh with ourselves and please stop that because now we have more energy and focus to move ahead and don't circle around this why why me why me no you're perfectly normal you are meant for something greater Change, chaos, negativity outside do not matter. I know it sounds paradox, but the power is within. If you focus on yourself and you do the three steps that are just around the corner that I'm going to teach you now, you will get new energy because everything is energy. And this overwhelmed state, this crisis state, depression, however you call it, wherever you are at, it is an energy drainer if we circle around it, or if we just accept it and let it go. That's the difference. Where focus goes, energy grows, and we want to focus on what you want, who you are, okay? So now let's take a little bit of a break. Not really. Take out your workbook and reflect. Again, we're not consuming. We are working with this content. And what is one takeaway from this intro you want to keep forever? In everything we do here, don't overthink it. Your intuition is key. Your intuition knows. 
And the first thing that pops into your head, write it down, okay? Don't overcomplicate it. Also, in order to make changes, you need one starter belief to turn your story around. And that is, yes, it is possible for me. Can you affirm that it is possible for you? Please write it down in your workbook to really ingrain that and to know that it is possible for you because what fires wires, the more we repeat another belief or a great belief, the more it is really ingrained in ourselves, in our identity and becomes part of ourselves. And often, this is one of the, maybe one of the major obstacles when clients come, that they fear that they will lose instead of win. And this is just one question we always ask. So what if you win instead of lose? What if you win a really magical life? The thing is, we often don't have a lot of role models in our life. And therefore, we can't really anticipate how it could be, how gorgeous it could be. What if you're the pioneer? What if you win and not lose? And now you're still feeling resistant now to go on the surfing board and surf your change? Then I have another question for you. What will you lose out if you don't make the changes? Will you be okay with the same old, same old in one year, in five years, in 10 years from now, even 80 years from now, looking back at your life? Feel into that. Be really honest. And what if this works out better than ever expected? How will I feel? Get into this feeling mode. Connect to this feeling because that is a puller. That is something that pulls you towards your vision. Because we always want to feel better, right? So take a moment, stop the video, and then we will carry on with the star in you, the three steps to clarity and confidence.